In this micro nugget, we address features on demand. This is part of the teaching that I have in our 70-410 series for CBT Nuggets, installing and configuring Windows Server 2012. I'm James Conrad. Let's take a look here at what Features On Demand actually is. What we want to do with this is to slim down the footprint of the installation for a core or a full installation of Windows Server 2012. You see, there's several unused features in any installation of Windows Server 2012. It might be a DNS server that I never want to be a DHCP server, or I never want to be a remote desktop server of some kind. Uh, or maybe it's a DHCP server that I never want to be a certification authority or a domain control. So there's lots of unused features. Now the thing is, all of the things that I don't want to use, they're located in a C colon backslash windows and then backslash win SXS or a side by side directory. I'll show you that here in a moment. And, and these are just available at all times. So that if I ever do want to add a role or a feature, it doesn't make me beg for a Windows DVD and track it down somewhere. Instead, all of the source files I need to add or rem add an additional role or feature are always in this directory. But that takes up a lot of space. So I might want to remove those binaries, or the payload as we also call them, on disk from out of this directory. Just by removing them, I can also put them back later if I want to. But you do have to specify a source if you want to put back those files at some point in the future. Uh, you may have to uh, point to a mounted WIM file from the Windows Server 2012 DVD. If you can't find it from there, it can also go to Windows Update, but that might take a little while to download all of that. Now, how do you actually use features on demand? Well, what we do with this is we use PowerShell, and you can even use this on uh, offline virtual hard disks, or VHDs, or VHDXs, as we now use in Server 2012. And the advantage of this, especially in organizations that heavily use virtualization and Hyper-V virtual machines, is that they can dramatically slim down the size of all of their VHDs, which collectively could add up to a huge amount of disk space. So switching over to a plain installation of Windows Server 2012, uh, I want to take a look here at the Windows side-by-side -side directory. You can see I'm in Windows and pointed at the side-by-side -side directory where I've looked at the properties of it. It gives me 6 gigabytes, 519 megabytes and change here on this installation. I want to slim that down. Even just a little bit will help. Uh, so what I'll do is I've gone to a... Let me cancel this for a moment. I've gone to a... PowerShell prompt as an administrator, and you do have to do this as an administrator. And I've gone to uninstall Windows feature, that's my PowerShell commandlet, and then the name of the features I want to uninstall, I'm just using a couple of simple ones here, are Active Directory Domain Services. In other words, this will never be a domain controller. Since it's never going to be a domain controller, I'm also removing the Group Policy Management Console. Notice there's no space after the comma there. The Group Policy Management Console, since I never need that either. And then I'm going to choose also Remove here at the end. Now. It is possible to run all of this without remove. That's only going to be useful if I had previously installed both of those features and I wanted to uninstall those features. But without using remove, the source files and the, the payload, in other words, would still be in the Windows side-by-side -side directory. I want to remove those from the side-by-side -side directory using this last option here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and press enter here. And we'll see it starting to collect data. This does take a little bit of time. When it's done, we'll come back and take a look at the total disk space used. All right, now we see this has completed, and we will see here that it has removed some space from the hard drive. It used to say 6 gigabytes and then 519 megabytes here. Now it's 422, so that's nearly 100 megabytes. Doesn't really sound like a whole awful lot right now, but if you apply that to a whole bunch of virtual hard disks, for example, in a heavily leveraged virtualization environment, that could add up to quite a few gigabytes worth of storage space. And I will we'll show you how to remove that from those VHDs or VHDXs in the nugget that you'll see for CBT Nuggets on the 70-410. Well, once again, my name is James Conrad. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.